In this video, we're going to compare SQL aggregate and aggregate window functions. Now we're gonna do this using the City Bike Stations dataset in DuckDB. Uh, if you haven't, if you wanna know how to load that data, have a look at the previous video up the top. We're gonna to start by writing a query that just returns one record from the bike stations table. So we can run that query, you can see the stuff we get back. So we get a number of bikes available, the station ID, the station name, and then a bunch of other metadata as well. Let's start by writing an aggregate function against that table. So we can start, so we can write, hey, get me the station name, the day, the weekday, and then we'll compute the average, the min, the max, and the standard deviation of the number of bikes available. And then let's just filter it so we get back one station, and we're gonna group by all the non-aggregate columns, and then we'll sort it by day. So we're gonna get the earliest ones first. And you can see we get back for McDougall Street and Prince Street, a bunch of days in August 2019, and we get one row for each station, for each day. So we've got one for the 2nd of August, one for the 3rd, and so on. Now let's have a look at how we would write the equivalent aggregate window function. So again, we're gonna, write, we're gonna start, so we're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna get the station name, I wanna get the day. This time we're gonna average the number of bikes available, and then we're gonna say over, and then we're gonna say a, part, a partition. So this is kind of similar to the, to the group by, so we're gonna partition this window by the station ID and the day, and then we're gonna return the results along with the at the timestamp and the number of bikes available. Now notice this time, uh, we've got two entries uh, for McDougall Street here. So we've got one, one for uh, 1.47 in the morning and, and 35 seconds. And then if we go down a little bit, we've got another one for 1.47 and 56 seconds. So those are two entries on the same day. And you see they've both got the same average, so 18.82, but they've got the individual values as well, which are uh, 28, and then 29. So you got so, so you can so that's the difference. That's the main difference is that we can compute the average and then we get the individual rows as well. Now the reason that this is useful uh, is is because we could then filter it. So if we put our previous query as a common table expression, and then we're going to just filter on that and we're going to get uh, McDougall Station on the 6th of August, and then we're going to only return the rows where the available number of bikes is bigger than the average. And so you can see here, we get back the average is, is 14.92, and that's going to be the same all the way down. And then it's going to give us those only those records that are bigger. So the ones that are smaller, those are going to be excluded. Now we could do this, uh, write this query to find where the availability is less than average as well. So same, uh, same query, but this time we're just going to switch around the available to be less than the average. Uh, and you see here we get back uh, a bunch of different times. So there are more than 10 rows, but you see we've got a bunch of times at sort of 2.33 in the morning, which is interesting. So presumably there's not a load of people riding bikes around New York at this time of day. I assume they're doing some sort of maintenance. And then we can see like in the rush hour in the evenings, uh, those bikes have then uh, presumably been taken and people are using them to cycle uh, back home again. We can also call other aggregate functions as well. So on this CTE here, we'll start like the most interesting thing is when we're doing multiple of them, we can define this window clause. So here we're saying I've got a window called station and that's gonna partition the data by the station ID and then by the day. And then if we look back up the top, we're saying I wanna compute the average over that station, the min, the max. And then we're also getting the 75th percentile as well. And now if we write a query against that CTE, we could say, hey, I wanna get the, the records from that CTE for McDougall Street again on the 7th of August where the availability is greater than 70, uh, greater than the 75th percentile. And then we get back a bunch of records. So you can see that the 75th percentile is 25. So it's quite, it's quite, a, lot, quite a lot of bikes available. And, uh, and we're, we're sort of trying to find the times when, 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 the most would, when we would be exceeding that. We could also use it across all the stations. So perhaps we wanna find, okay, which at a particular time, so five till, perhaps we're gonna look at five till six in the evening on the 9th of August, I wanna know which stations anywhere have more than 75% of their bikes available. And so we get back a result. So you can see here, the, these are the places. Uh, and perhaps, the, perhaps here that people are working a little bit later, or I guess the bikes are, are not quite as popular for some other reason. So far, we've created windows partitioned by one or more fields and computed aggregates across all the rows in those partitions. There is actually something else called framing where we can reduce the rows within that partition so that the aggregate is applied only to a few rows either side of the current row. So one way of doing this, uh, if we have a look at another CTE, is we can do uh, like use the rows framing. And so we can say, hey, we're gonna find the rows, but in this case, between two preceding, so two before, up to the current row. And then everything else is gonna be kind of the same. So we're gonna compute our average just over those three rows. And then we're also gonna get, just so we can see how it works, we're gonna get uh, the lag, so i.e. one before, 
and then we're going to get two before as well. And then we'll write our query to return the average uh, n minus two, n minus one, for one of the stations of the McDougal station on the 6th of August. Well, you see we get the result here. And so for the first uh, row that we got, so this is at one minute past midnight, the current value is 15. Uh, the previous one is 14, so that's actually going back to the previous day, to the 5th of August. And then 13 is also going back to the previous day as well. And it's not until we get to 7 past midnight, as you can see there, it's got 12. And then 14 is the one before, so that's, that's a, a 4 past midnight. And then 15 is the one before that, um, so that's 1 past midnight. And then it will be the same. So if we go down to 8, it'll be uh, 8 will have the one at 8, the one at 7, and then the one at 4. And so this is really good for computing like rolling average. This is kind of the rolling average based on three values. And so you could get it, you could sort of, um, if you'd had like some spikes in it, this will kind of flatten it out. So it might make it a bit easier to see the availability across the day. And we can also do something called range framing. And so if we look at a new CTE, so on this one, instead of using row, we're saying I want to get the range between an interval 10 minutes before the current row and up to the current row. And again, we're computing the average, the min and the max. And then we'll filter uh, based on that on that temporary table and get the results back. And so you can see here, it's not until 16 past where we have all the values uh, for up to 10 minutes before. So for the 16 past value, the available uh, is nine, but then the, and then the average is computed from 16 past, eight past and seven past. Uh, okay, and that's it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.